Hello from New Hampshire on a very windy, changeable, late April spring day. This can sometimes be typical weather in New Hampshire and I thought we would do a little tiptoeing through the tulips today just to show how beautiful they are, how much color there is on such a, a gray day. I haven't planted tulips for years and years. Um, this is the first time I've planted tulips on the slope. It was an afterthought in November. And I ran to Home Depot one very cold and rainy night and they had bags and bags of bulbs left. And I said, well, I'll put them in and give it a whirl. Um, funny thing is it was all mixed bags and, um, or, or maybe I did buy a bunch of reds and plant them all in a row <laughs> because that's how they came out uh, on, on the top portion of the slope. We're planning on uh, filling the whole slope next year with them. And um, my thought is when the tulips are done, I will go ahead and um, plant nasturtium. I'm just going to throw some nasturtium seeds in and let those frolic all over the slope. So I just, we can't get over how pretty the bulbs are. All of our neighbors are coming up. We're at the end of a, of a cul-de-sac, so we're the last house on the road. Uh, but all of our neighbors that walk up here are very happy that we planted all of these. The nice thing about the batch was that we had some really early ones. Some of them, some of the pink ones are going out. And now some yellows and some purples are coming in. And the reds are still hanging on. When I plant tulips, I always plant them in, um, in a mass like this. So the first, the first year I ever planted tulips was probably 30 years ago. And I had my single bulb planter and I was planting one bulb and then the next bulb and then the next bulb. And when they bloomed the next year, I found that not every bulb bloomed in the first place and they were so sparse in their bloom. I didn't get an impact from it at all. So the way I plant any bulbs now, that is when I remember in the fall to even think about planting them, I always plant them in large batches. So I dig a shallow hole. I don't normally listen to uh, what they say <clears throat> is the depth on bulbs. I planted all of these probably in a, I don't know, three or four inch shallow hole, which I'm sure is not what the label says. But in this rocky New Hampshire earth, I'm not about to worry about digging down too much deeper. And I've never really had a problem with bulbs blooming. One of the other things I wanted to mention about the tulips is it's kind of an experiment for me in New Hampshire. You know, will they, will they last? Will they not? First of all, I was just happy that the deer didn't get them, which is shocking because we have a lot of deer. So that was a plus that they even all came up. But what I'm going to do this year that I did read about, and I do have one clump of tulips in the cottage garden that I can show you in a little while. I cut the heads off. So the seeds, I don't let them go to seed. I'm gonna cut all the heads off and hope that these come back next year. It's, it's a big if, we'll see. But even if they don't, I'm still going to keep planting tulips every year just to get this. Look, here are some more that are later ones coming up. So these mixed bags of tulips are pretty good. I got them at Home Depot. Um, they were 50% off, so it wasn't even all that much uh, money. And I would say there's probably uh, two to 250 tulips on the slope. It's funny because they don't go very far when you really look at them. You need a lot to make a big impact. And again, you, you have to plant them in, in large masses. So plant a shallow, dig a shallow hole and just throw in 15 to 20 bulbs in each hole and then you'll get some impact. And then cut the seed heads off and hopefully they'll come back next year. We're going to plant a lot more on the slope next year up at the top as well. And um, if these don't come back, then I'll know that I just have to replant every year. And that's okay. So we might have an off year next year with no tulips down here. But I bet there will be some of these varieties that will come back without a problem. 
and um, we'll enjoy what we get next year. So I wanted to share these with you to show how much tulips are worth it to brighten up a gray and cloudy day. We just all have to remember in the fall to put that on our list of things to do. Here's another little batch of tulips I planted up in the cottage garden. All the same color, wanted it, I didn't really want a riot of color in here. And um, these have been blooming for quite a while. And they're still going, they're a little closed up today because there's no sun at all. And I mentioned earlier a batch of tulips I bought that I've been cutting the heads off every year. And um, they've been coming back and multiplying every year. It's a great orange tulip. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. Probably more of a species tulip. But they are really um, multiplying. It started out with just a few, and this is the most I'll have this year. But when they're blooming in the bright sunlight, they're just beautiful. And I'm just looking across the cottage garden I know I'm talking about tulips, but as an added bonus, I just have to throw in some of the epimediums. Because I love, love, love the epimediums. You know, it's, it's April 30th here, and I go for anything that will bloom early in the spring. So I figured while we're up in the cottage garden, might as well just tack on a few of these little cute epimediums while we're at it. Okay, back to the tulips. Hope you enjoyed the tulips. Hope you got a few little tips from me about planting in mass in shallow holes where you can plant 15 to 25 at a time and snip off the heads once they bloom. Don't let them go to seed. And maybe we'll all have beautiful tulips in years to come. I'm back out with the tulips. It's a beautiful sunny morning. They get backlit from the sun on the slope. So yesterday it was cloudy, windy, dreary and the tulips were beautiful. And they're stunning when they're backlit from the sun. I will definitely be planting tulips every year after seeing the impact they're making on the slope. Again, I'll have to see. I am literally tiptoeing through the tulips like a nanny goat going down my slope over the rocks. <clears throat> I'll have to see if they come up next year I'll plant a whole bunch more next year and um, see what comes up of this batch. And then I'll know for sure how much I need to plant every year. So it's a little bit of work, but again, as I mentioned earlier, I dig, you know, decent sized holes in width, not too deep. You know, you can see this one. I think there are some bulbs that didn't come up. Ah, oh, there's the, there's a weed, the bane of my existence, that weed. I forget the name of it. I don't, I think I block it out of my head every time. Um, <laughs> love this one coming up. Again, it's a pretty good, pretty good mixed bag from Home Depot. Half price at the end of the season. I like that color with the barberry behind it. Our little white pines, we planted a couple dwarf white pines and I got a little shocked when they went in but they'll do okay they were quite brown just a couple weeks ago and they're they're getting okay so I can't stress enough how much tulips are worth just a little bit of extra effort at the end of the season when we're putting the garden to bed I'll head up to the cottage garden and show the other the other tulips again with the sunshine. Just for fun on the way into the cottage garden, I thought I would stop by a little area of daffodils. These were planted last fall as well. 
And I'm really glad I thought about planting bulbs because again, I, I just forgot. Every winter, I would lament that I forgot once again to plant bulbs. <laughs> so I got out there uh, last minute. And I'm really glad because they're just so happy and pretty. Let's check out some more tulips. Here's the batch of tulips up in the cottage garden. They've been blooming for a couple weeks and they're a little more open today since it's sunny. I wanted just a little blush pinky peach color in here with the purple. And again, tulips are just great with sun, without sun, but when you get some backlit sun on them, they're just beautiful. There's our little neighbor dog, Bones. Look at the shadows in that. Just beautiful. This might um, make me decide to plant more tulips in the cottage garden. I had a lot of tulips planted in here a very long time ago. And, um, you know, I think one, maybe two come back every year. And that's about it. So I have a feeling it might be something I'll, I'll be doing every year. The orange ones have opened up a bit. I really like these a lot. Really pretty tulips. And these have come back every year, which is a double bonus. I think the birds are finally happy for some sunshine. And there's the orange with the purple. So there's not a lot of room in the cottage garden. If anyone's seen the cottage garden video, you'll see what it looks like in July and then again in the late summer. It's pretty packed. So I have to figure out where I would do my mass planting of tulips in here. Because I do like them, you know, in, in clumps like this or in like the mass planting on the slope just to get that real impact. A tulip here or there just doesn't really, um, while beautiful, it just doesn't give the impact that a large grouping does. It worked well around this center bed, planting the tulips, because they're still all in a group, even though they're kind of lined up around the edge. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tulips, and I hope you will plant some and enjoy them as much as I do.